Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and wow, what an amazing week it has been watching the SN1 Starship come together and head over to be fitted out for testing at the launch site. Sadly, of course, that same ship failed to hold the necessary pressure to make it to the next stage of testing, which has resulted in quite an impressive explosion here. Along with that, a few small updates with the CRS-20 mission, which has been slightly delayed. And then to top all of that off, a few more surprises here. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Now a little disclaimer first here, this footage has only just dropped and the aftermath and news around this is still occurring. Although this is exciting news to watch, I sincerely hope no one was injured in any way by this intense pressure event. Previously test tanks have been quite well held down to limit parts of the vessel shooting around like this, but this time the entire SN1 Starship tank section just launched itself into the air here. We were assuming it wasn't going to fly due to comments earlier in the week. Well, we were kind of wrong about that because fly it did and roughly 30 metres in height here, which is roughly the height of the Starship tank structure itself. That wasn't the real concerning part though. You can see the top tank is unaffected by what's occurred here so far. It must be holding quite a lot of pressure though because when it hits the ground, that top tank or at least part of it is ejected horizontally like a missile, screaming out of frame with a louder boom as it hits the ground. Just listen to the audio itself and you can hear what I mean. Now just before the pressure event occurs, we can see that something has ruptured around the bottom bulkhead. To me, it seems like the welds around this area may have started to crack, releasing a lot of the pressure. Immediately after, you can see they were desperately trying to dump pressure before the explosion. There are two vents, as far as we can see here, one for the top liquid methane tank and one for the lower liquid oxygen tank. Seconds later, the whole bottom bulkhead looks to have blown out. As far as I can tell, there was only a frost covering over the liquid oxygen tank. Now, I suspect the top tank section here was pressurised with nitrogen gas just to ensure the bulkhead for the top tank didn't implode. That would be why that section isn't iced over and also I suspect why it made a much more pronounced explosion. The gas in this tank can depressurise much more violently than the liquid nitrogen in the tank below. From what we see from the footage afterwards, it looks like the launch mount is completely destroyed, so I guess we'll be seeing a new one under construction very soon. Footage also exists from S Padre and Lab Padre, and I'm hoping some optimization of that will let us see more detail from a wider angle. Their footage is from a lot further back, so they may have some more insight here after the footage has been cleaned up. So far though, this footage from Boca Chica Gal is the best we have here so far. So yes, the news is always dropping daily. The minute I hit the upload button on these videos, you can bet there are already new developments to discuss. Right after last week's video, we saw the SN1 at Boca Chica undergo the stacking of the tank's aft and forward sections. This massive crane was delivered earlier for this huge task. Thank you very much to all of the work done by Jack and NASA Spaceflight for capturing all of that footage last week. Certainly follow Jack on Twitter and consider supporting all the creators on individual services such as Patreon and YouTube as well. All the support you provide them helps us to share and promote the amazing news from SpaceX coming daily. NASA Spaceflight's channel is quite seriously second to none and Boca Chica Gal is back in action after a short break providing new wonderful footage. Links to all of this is in the description, so please do go and support the massive effort going on there. Now, shortly after this, we witnessed the downcomer being placed through the tanks. This is essentially the core fuel line to plumb in the upper liquid methane tank to the engines below. You can see the downcomer has a triple branching manifold near the bottom, each having three pipelines connected to lead to each of the three sea level wrapped engines. Based on images here, it's likely that a header tank will sit above this to hold the needed fuel for landing in the future. Although the SN1 had already met its demise, it is worth noting that many of us were under the impression that this version had become a more simplistic Pathfinder ship. It is certainly clear though that the construction quality and welding techniques were much improved from the previous Mark I version. Just look at the difference between these two sections. The top nose section here is of course from the Mark I version. This is the new tank of the SN1 here. 
So during the week the main body was transported to the launch site. Elon tweeted shortly after saying that the Starship SN1 tank is preparing for Raptor attachment and static fire which will be conducted over the coming days. He goes on to say that the next SN2 tank integration starts this week with a number of improvements and also added that they were using the wrong settings previously. To make the worlds super flat and strong they are building a heavy duty custom planisher but having the right settings is a major improvement. Elon replied to a tweet recently when it was asked if three Raptors are planned to be mounted in the SN1 to which he replied simply saying three on SN2. Although it isn't directly stated this certainly suggests to me that Elon had already given up partially on the SN1. There was a lot of debate over the last few days as to whether it would have been possible to do a test flight with the SN1 anyway. Even if it could have I'm not sure how much benefit that would have been with the exception of the pressure tests and the static fire tests themselves. I'm actually thinking the next SN2 Starship already under construction will verify new further improved welding techniques along with test firing three wrapped engines simultaneously. If the quality of the SN2 vessel is adequate for the 20km test flight that may occur shortly after. If not SpaceX will already have the next SN3 version already under construction. However just remember how quickly this tank section has come together. It has been just under a month since this version has been under construction and seeing as there are new components of the SN2 already in development, several more weeks and the next version will likely be at this same point. Now I just have to give a shout out to Art Galvin here capturing these incredible images of the Starship being lit up into the surrounding fog. Unreal shots there. Now the speed of this progress is just amazing compared to anything else out there. Currently SpaceX alone is launching around one quarter of all rockets in the world. That alone is a mind boggling statistic. There has never been this amount of development around the world in regard to space travel. You could argue that the Apollo program was just as rapid but there is a certain competitiveness right now that is very much making all of this seem like the new improved space race. The private sectors of course are now pushing the boundaries leaving government agencies and legacy launch providers floundering around trying to make sense of things. NASA just last week sent out a press release publicly confirming that SLS will not fly this year as we had expected. Now it has been pushed back no earlier than April of 2021 with NASA saying that they are preparing for the first uncrewed flight test next year of the agency's powerful new rocket and spacecraft in development for the Artemis Lunar Exploration Program. So when we compare the length of time the space launch system has been in development, delays at this point are starting to almost feel comical. SpaceX's development here with the Starship is totally different. They are not trying to create one ship, they are creating prototypes to test. Some may fail, some may fail spectacularly, but where they fail there will be several more Starships in development right behind them waiting for their turn to test. It is super important to understand what is going on here. I get so many comments saying that this looks like a tin can or that it doesn't look like it will ever take people to orbit and although these comments are not necessarily wrong in regards to these initial test vehicles they are missing the point of what's actually going on here. The now dead SN1 which was being built right before our eyes was the next iteration in the design and construction. There were certainly improvements over the Mark 1 but obviously not perfect. We need to keep in mind here that it was purely a test vehicle and the next or the one after that will eventually achieve that milestone of the 20 kilometer test flight and landing. With each iteration there are lessons learned. Test fast and fail quickly is the aim here and the next version will improve on the issues just faced. We'll be seeing that next SN2 version being stacked more substantially over the next week. Already some of the latest footage shows the next bulkhead for SN2 here well into development. We can see SpaceX are currently constructing a third tent, presumably the same as the other two already in existence so they are ramping up to have even more Starship construction work going on. The vehicle assembly building also is coming along nicely with the top section largely complete and the walls now being filled out. Amazing just how fast this is all coming together as well. The big difference here is that SpaceX with Elon Musk's development model is the complete opposite to those space agencies we are more familiar with. Elon Musk over promises and has wildly optimistic timeframes. Yep that is all true but at the same time they deliver much more than anyone else in this industry. Just because they do not meet their overly optimistic timeframes that isn't a sign of failure. Frustration for many of us sure but in the end show me where SpaceX have failed overall to achieve 
amazing milestones. This is what is truly incredible about what we are seeing here. As we talked about last week, Elon Musk mentioned that SpaceX is driving hard for a fully reusable orbital flight this year. This means a full super heavy stack and there is very little doubt about that. Many people commented saying that it could be possible for a completely empty Starship to make it to orbit. I very much doubt that based on all of the dry mass stats we've seen for the Starship in the past, but even if that was possible, the margins to come back and land based on what I know would be impossible. Now again, if Super Heavy flies within the next 10 months, that would be beyond belief. But even if it is late and we're talking mid-2021 instead, compared to any other development in the world, that is still incredible speed. Now if you are interested in many of SpaceX's amazing upcoming achievements, you may be interested in this video here covering Crew Dragon, Starlink and much more. And of course, while you're here, please do consider subscribing. There is loads of news of all of this coming up and I'd love to share all of that with you. Now just the other day, SpaceX's CRS-20 mission has had a slight delay announcement with NASA saying that SpaceX is now targeting March 6th for the launch to the International Space Station. Apparently during regular pre-flight inspections of the Falcon 9, SpaceX noticed a valve motor on the second stage engine behaving strangely. It was quickly decided that the safest option was to use the next available second stage that was already nearby and ready for flight. That second stage has already completed the pre flight inspections, so this will get SpaceX back on track quickly. Great news there. The first stage booster is actually the same used for CRS-19, designated B1059. This was the one and only flight for this booster so far. It landed on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, which it should do again very soon, making this booster the 50th successful landing for SpaceX. Sadly, of course, that should have occurred last week with the Starlink launch were it not for the loss of the booster on that mission, something we still have not heard anything else about, so not sure what happened there. So it's about time I shared with you the news which I'm sure you'll be a little less excited about than I am. Back in January, of course, I passed 100,000 subscribers which was just incredible. It actually took a little while to organize but I've had now delivered the official creator award from YouTube. Now for those of you that are patrons, I actually unboxed this for the first time in a live stream which is available for you guys still if you want to check that out. Now, it's actually hard to believe that I have well over 100,000 people subscribed and watching my channel here. On YouTube, the numbers can get really big and it's super easy to lose sight of the fact that each and every person who has subscribed over the last few years has done so wanting to see more of my content. So as you've probably already noticed, the new award has a designated spot right behind me here, just so that I don't forget how amazing it is to have all of you with me here on the platform. Honestly, this seems like a bit of a dream really. I haven't been able to fully comprehend these numbers and it's so easy to see those numbers just as stats to improve or beat. I've got to force myself to remember that these stats are real people watching my content. Millions of views and hours of watch time. Last time I looked, I think I had over 180 years of watch time. Now that is a number hard to comprehend. So yes, thank you everybody. Many of you have been following for a long time. This is not just my achievement here. We are together capturing and reporting on what is quite literally a turning point in history. In a few years time, everyone will look back to these few years and clearly see that this was a pivotal point in our journey to become a multi-planet species. And you guys are part of this. You're watching this play out. You're sharing these videos and images and you're discussing these topics with not only me, but your friends and family. So thank you for watching and being interested and helping to drive this passion that we all have you make a difference in this awesome endeavor and I sincerely appreciate every minute you spend here on this channel. A huge thank you of course to my patrons here as well. You are quite literally turning this dream of mine from a hobby into a business. If you like what I do and you would like to join our awesome patrons here, head to patreon.com slash Marcus House. You can interact with me more directly via the included exclusive roles in Discord. You can check out some exclusive patron only content and you can also have your name listed here like these other incredible people. You are all quite literally changing my world here. 
Of course, a massive thank you to my quality control squad here for helping me research and proof the material for these videos. If you're interested in these topics and would like to be part of this, follow me on Twitter and please do get in touch. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my video last week talking about the incredible achievements coming up for SpaceX in 2020, so check that out. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, content that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you everyone for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.